That's right. Actually, that's right. But no, that, that's another thing about uh, the point out. Now, I'd just like to point out a couple of things as well. If I'm not mistaken, Keith Jackson said that was the the greatest play he'd ever seen uh, in college football at that point. Yeah, at that time he did. And that was uh, that was your catch and run. And I know I've spoken to um, you know Norm Carlson about that game and about your efforts, and he said that the the, the play you just mentioned, the 29 yard, another outstanding catch, an outstanding run to, to actually get the Gators in position to kick that game-winning field goal was what was was just as good a play as the other one. That was one of the greatest plays he said he's ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, again, it came at the right time, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, nothing we can say about it. I mean, it, was, it, it, it did come at the right time, period, and we ended up winning the game, so we're very fortunate. College football fans, SEC fans, and Gator fans, you're listening to Talking Old School with Roger Franklin Williams, and you're listening to a special edition of Talking Old School the Old School Gator Series. Right now we're discussing the Florida Georgia Series with one of the all-time greats from the Florida Georgia Series. In fact, he's in the Florida Georgia Hall of Fame. Gator great and SEC legend Richard Trapp. Now, um, Richard, can you tell us just a little bit about the intensity of, 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 the, of the players over the Florida Georgia Series back in those days? Well, you know, I, the Georgia-Florida game is, is really a happening. I mean, that's the way I have to, have to put it. It still is. It, it, it isn't just a game. It, it's a it, it's a, a scene, you know, that that lasts all week, um, both for the fans, the alumni, and for the players. Uh, I think when you're playing the game itself, at least the way I was, uh, I didn't realize the significance of it all that much. I mean, you're a 19, 20 year old kid, you know. Uh, it's it's really after you play and after you you know after you know over the years and how important it is to a lot of people and and. and the significance of so many of those games, that you realize how you know the, how that was great that you could be a part of that. Honestly, to to say how the intensity was uh, during the the time that I was there, I didn't I don't remember it being any different than basically any other important game. I mean, y y you know, y you try to follow the same routine before every game, whether it's the Georgia Florida game or another game, and uh, and you just try to do your best, try to remember you know remember the plays and uh, and and get your sleep and those kinds of things and uh, you know just like every team there are certain players on your team that are very emotional and they get very emotional before a game and you get others that aren't and I happen to not be uh, and I don't, I don't think too many wide receivers really are you know they're mainly defensive ball players you know with the main mindset of a, <laughs> of a defensive player but um, as far as the intensity is concerned I, I don't see it as any different than any others. Can you tell us a little bit more about that that great run that you made, and just to, to set the stage, if I'm not mistaken, that that was actually uh, Gators were behind 16 to seven at that point. It was it was getting late in the game. I think it was um, you know well into the fourth quarter, and Gators were up around midfield. And, you, the, and one thing that uh, you, you know, on the stat sheet, it's a 53 yard touchdown reception. But in reality, it was about a, a short pass, what, maybe a, a four or five or six-yard pass yeah, from, from Larry Rince. Do you, do you ever uh, yeah. uh, needle Larry Rince about uh, getting that 53-yard touchdown reception <laughs> when you were the one that uh, you know, ran it about uh, 50 of those yards? Yeah, well, uh, no, Larry's a great guy. Yeah, I, I, um, It was a curl pattern. It was about an eight- or nine-yard reception, something like that, and, and got away from the initial uh, uh, defensive back that was, was on me. It may have even been a linebacker, and shook him off, and, and then I kind of, took a few steps to which would have been to the left side of the field and juked another defensive back and then ended up going you know down the field and then broke to my right ended up on the far right sideline uh, running down maybe 30 or 40 yards down the sideline to score the touchdown um, again you know I had a couple of great blocks uh, Graham McKeel my fullback uh, you see if you ever saw the game film on it uh, he made two blocks on that on that play I, it, initially when I was in the middle of the field. He flattened a, a linebacker, uh, and then I, he just kept going. And I got all the way over to the right side of the sideline and up the sideline, and, and there he was, and he ended up blocking the last guy. So, uh, you know, it, it's truly a team game, uh, football is. And it's very, very seldom is it one person that does it. I mean, there's a way you need help, and, and I certainly had it on that play. You know, let me, let me take, give you a, a good story about that. We're up on our first break. Oh, we'll okay, sure. can uh, hold it. We'll, sure. we'll talk about it when we come back from break. Gator fans, SEC fans, college football fans, you're listening to Talking Old School with Roger Franklin Williams and the Old School Gator Series. Our guest today is SEC legend Richard Trapp. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back on Talking Old School, so stay with us. 
Welcome back, college football fans, Gator fans, and SEC fans to Talking Old School with Roger Franklin Williams. Welcome back to a special edition of Talking Old School, the Old School Gator series. Today we're very pleased to be joined by Gator great and SEC legend, also a member of the Florida Georgia Game Hall of Fame, Richard Trapp, the star of the 1967 16-14 Gator upset over the Georgia Bulldogs. We're talking about that game, the Florida Georgia series. Old school Gator football and a lot of other things as well. In a few minutes, we'll get into Richard's um, professional career with the Buffalo Bills and the San Diego Chargers. But right now, uh, Richard, when we as we went to break, you were going to tell us about a great story that you had. So we'd love to hear. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it tells you the um, intensity of the Georgia Florida game. I think uh, I would say maybe a good ten years after this game, uh, I was happened to be in Atlanta on a business trip, and I was sitting in a in a nice restaurant, uh, ready to getting ready to eat and sitting at the bar, sitting down there, and, and I started talking to the guy next to me. And we started talking, and got around to football, and I ended up telling him I'm Richard Trapp. And he's a big Georgia fan. And all of a sudden, he just cold cocks me. Sitting, he's right next to me, hits me, <laughs> knocks me off my chair, you know, and I'm, I kind of get up, and he immediately, he raises both his hands and says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He says, but, but I swore to my wife, I was at that game, and I swore to my wife, if I ever met Richard Trapp, I'd cold cock him. <laughs> and he ended up uh, buying me dinner that, that evening, and, you know, I, it, it was really, I mean, now I can laugh about it, but at that time, <laughs> that's how intense it is. <laughs> that's, that's a great example of the intensity of the Florida Georgia Ten series. years later, you know. Absolutely. Um, can you tell, you know, Richard, you played uh, with some great, great players when you played with the Gators, if I'm not mistaken, your 67 year you guys had, I think, at least seven guys on both sides of the ball that went on and played in the NFL, and about five on the offensive side of the ball. Just yeah. can you tell us, talk a little bit about? And you know, we talked about Steve Spurrier, but what about guys like uh, you know, Larry Smith and Jim Yarbrough and Larry Rinson sure. and others that you'd like to sure. talk about? Uh, I, I really, I was fortunate to play with several, I, as many as as any team has today that I know of. I mean, we, I, I would imagine if I sat there and really thought about everyone I played with for, let's say, 66 and 67 teams, I would imagine there was 10 to 12 players that played in the NFL. Um, I mean, all the way from, from Larry Smith, playing with the Rams for several years, a great running back. Jim Yarbrough played with Detroit Lions for maybe 12 years, um, great offensive tackle. Larry Renz, even, I actually played with him with San Diego. Uh, he was a wide receiver in the, in the pros. He, he, he played one year for San Diego when I was there. Um, Harmon Wages, running back for the Falcons for several years. Guy Dennis, um, offensive lineman for uh, Cincinnati, for the Bengals for years and years. Steve Tannen, uh, I played with him with the New York Jets. Uh, in fact, he was my roommate there. Uh, defensive back, great defensive back. Bill Carr, center. Uh, he played a couple of years in the pro with the Saints. Larry Gagner played for years with the, with the Giants as an offensive guard. Uh, Barry Brown, defensive end, played with the Patriots for years. Um, Alan Trammell played with Houston, defensive back. Bruce Bennett, defensive back, uh, up in Canada for years. And Bruce, you know, was the career leader in interceptions for, for the Gators for 30, 40 years until just recently it was broken. Uh, in fact, Kay Stevenson, um, who basically never played at Florida, he was behind uh, Steve Spurrier, uh, quarterback. Uh, he was my quarterback one year at Buffalo. I mean, he made it in the, in the pros. In fact, he was our best quarterback the year that I played with him. Uh, so, I mean, those are just some of them. I can sit here, I can probably think of two or three others if I thought about it, but uh, we had several good uh, ball players. I mean, we had more, I think we had more depth um, the years there than Florida had ever had before. And you were mentioning that uh, back with, with Woodruff when he started, we always had some really good ball players, but it's usually, you know, two or three, and then our depth would, would, would slack off. <clears throat> but when I played, uh, and we had a lot of depth. We had a good team. And just if you're just joining us, uh, Richard, listen to Talking Old 